and this property is going to be rezoned in a way that's going to make it quite different than the neighboring properties on both sides. Um, so uh, I think uh, you know it's it's one of those things. I hope it uh, works. I uh, certainly hope that the business at that site does very very well. Um, there's been a lot of support for that business, and so um, you know this is what we started, and we should probably complete it. Uh, certainly uh, endorse the uh, safari properties, um, the property being purchased, and the town board working on the short-term rentals, uh, rental issue. Uh, the county planning department has been working on that, but they haven't come out with a model law, and so I, I agree that it's time that we see if maybe we can develop that here and send it back up from the grassroots level the other direction. And. Um, the DMV van being here on the first Friday of the month, it's very good for the town if people <coughs> use that van, right? Uh, Give some money in the county too. Keeps. Instead of doing it online, uh, if you do it at the van or in Kingston, nobody wants to go to Kingston, especially in this weather. But it keeps the money here. It keeps We're the money here. Nice. If you do it online, we don't get any of the money. And the so. parking fees at the county office building are going, likely going to go up. There's a resolution from the chair of the legislature to raise those parking fees so you can come and park here for free and get that done and um, keep the, um, the monies local. And then the final thing is in, uh, for the um, renaming of the Bridge Street Bridge, uh, I don't know if there are members of the family here today or that will see this, but um, the first step is this resolution from the town, and then I, as the legislator for District 22, which is Shandaken, Olive, Denning, and Hardenburg, will be able to take that resolution from the town to the county. We'll create a resolution um, at the timing that works for the family and have a public hearing uh, where members of the family can come and bring photos and um, we can. Uh, make this dedication uh, an event. The next month would be the actual vote then to name the bridge. And so if the family is ready and would like to go ahead, I do think that the, the passing the resolution tonight, a resolution, I can bring forward a resolution in September uh, or October and we can get something done in November or December. I'd be very happy to do that. And I'm um, sorry that I don't know the members of the family if they'll um, meet me uh, at some point in the evening. That would be great. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Any other public comments or resolutions? Okay. Resolution 10318, resolution to pay all bills. Where is the Department of Audit and Control required some boards to sign and inspect all vouchers coming into the town for payment? to number of total amounts from each fund. Therefore, be it resolved that the town board authorized the following vouchers paid. From general, $99,371.70. From highway, $193,457.21. Phoenicia Water, $4,565.59. Pine Hill Water, $241.57. Phoenicia Lights, $949.88. Chichester Lights, 148 and 33 cents. Pine Hill Lights, 566 and 83 cents. Ambulance donations, 238 and 88 cents. Recreation expense, 934 dollars and 50 cents. Heritage expense, 107 dollars and 39 cents. For a total of 300,581 dollars and 88 cents, I move its adoption. Second. Board Member Alba. Board Member Di Scafani? Yes. Board Member Storm? Yes. Board Member Van Blarkham? Yes. Supervisor Van? Yes. Resolution 104-18, resolution to adopt Town of Shandaken Local Law Number 2 of 2018, amending zoning map Big Indian Lots. Whereas the Town of Shandaken Planning Board, in a letter dated August 28, 2017, made a recommendation to amend the zoning map of the Town of Shandaken, specifically regarding two parcels located in Big Indian. And whereas an introductory local law entitled, quote, Zoning Map Amendment Big Indian Lots, unquote, was introduced before the town board of the town of Shandaken on October 2nd, 2017, and upon notice, duly published and posted at a hearing was held on October 16th, 2017, before the town board. And whereas public discussion was heard at such hearing concerning the merits and environmental significance of said introductory local law, 
where it was decided that the planning board perform the necessary state environmental quality review seeker for adoption at time at such time as the planning department seemed prudent and whereas the town the town board in resolution number 95-18 confirmed the town board uh, town planning board to act as lead agency and whereas the planning board subsequently held a public hearing and made a negative seeker declaration regarding local law number two 2018 in conjunction with the site plan review and whereas the town board held a public hearing on local law number two prior to its august 6 2018 meeting therefore be it resolved that the town of shandaken town board does hereby adopt local law number two of 2018 zoning map amendment big indian lots and that said local law number two will take effect immediately upon roll call approval of this resolution and certification by the town clerk of shandaken and move its adoption. Second. Board Member Dusselvani? Yes. Board Member Storms? Yes. Board Member Van Larkin? Yes. Supervisor Van? Yes. Resolution 10518, supporting participation in the New York City funded flood buyout program for property along New York State Route 28 in Mount Trump, New York. Whereas the town of Shindaken is subject to flooding that could damage property, close roads, disrupt traffic, and present a public health and safety hazard, and whereas at the request of local communities, funding from the New York City Department of Environmental Protection, or DEP, is being made available to help property owners who qualify for the New York City Funded Flood Buyout Program, NYC FFBO, based on eligibility criteria in five categories. One, hydraulic study properties recommended by engineering analysis. Two, CWC Flood Hazard Mitigation Implementation Program. Three, community approved stream management project. Four, erosion hazard. And five, inundation hazard. Whereas the town of Shandaken has conducted a local flood analysis or LFA, including a hydraulic analysis of flooding in the town, and the LFA recommends certain properties that are subject to repetitive flood damages should be considered for flood buyout. And whereas 5267 Route 28 Mount Trenton, New York 12457, SBL number 25.10 1 10 and 25.10-1-13, currently owned by Rodney Sage and Racine Schurter, has been recommended for consideration for buyout in the LFA. And the town has been in contact with the owners of the property requesting to participate in the NYC FFBO program under the hydraulic study category. And whereas the town of Shandaken has the option to decline ownership of the property, choosing instead that the city of New York own the property, but has the desire to own this property for future flood mitigation activities. And whereas the town of Shandaken understands that this town-owned property will be managed by the town in conjunction with a reuse plan prepared by the town that identifies the community's long-term plan for the management, use, and development of this parcel. All activities are to be subject to and consistent with the restrictions and flood-prone flood -prone areas identified in the second supplemental agreement among West of Hudson Watershed stakeholders concerning the New York City-funded flood buyout program, page 5, 1A, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Now, therefore, be it resolved, the Town of Shandaken Town Board approves 5267 Route 28 Mount Trepper, New York, 12457, SBL number 25.10-1-10 and 25.10-1-13 to apply for the NYC FFBO program to permanently remove this flood hazard risk, allowing the DEP to begin assisting them in the real estate process. And being further resolved, the Town of Shandaken Town Board opts for the town to retain ownership of the parcel for future flood mitigation activities and move its adoption. I second. Board member Dusselby? Yes. Board member Storms? Yes. Board member Van Blarco? Yes. Supervisor Sandler? Yes. Resolution 106-18, resolution authorizing supervisor and highway superintendent to withdraw from intermunicipal agreement, whereas on or about February 2015, the highway superintendents of the town of Hurley, Shandaken, Woodstock, and Ulster jointly purchased Youth Sweeper, and the town of Shandaken entered into an intermunicipal agreement for the purchase and operation of said sweeper, and whereas said sweeper was involved in an accident and has been rendered permanently inoperative. And whereas it is prudent that the town of Shandaken formally withdraw from said agreement as the purpose for such is in is now moot. Therefore, be resolved by the town board of Shandaken the following. Each whereas paragraph above is incorporated by reference into this section one and made a part hereof as material and operative provisions of this resolution. The town board of Shandaken does hereby direct the town supervisor and highway superintendent to execute any and all documents so as to withdraw the town of Shandaken from the aforesaid intermunicipal agreement. And I move this adoption. Board member Dusselvani? Yep. Board member Storms? Yes. Board member Van Blarkham? Yes. Supervisor Sanders? Yes.
Resolution 10718, Resolution Appointing Short-Term Rental Committee. Whereas the Town of Shandaken recognizes the growth of short-term rentals throughout the community, and whereas we recognize there are benefits affecting the town and personal economies, as well as issues regarding sound, trash, and overall community character. And whereas the town wishes to create legislation to better control and address these type of activities throughout the town, and whereas the town wishes to create a committee of individuals to help establish a base for such legislation. Therefore, be it resolved that the Town Board of Shandaken does hereby name Supervisor Robert A. Stanley, Town Board Member Kevin Van Borkham, Code Officer Howie McGowan, ZBA Vice Chair Rolf Reese, Planning Board Chair Don Brewer, and Planning Board Member Sam Spada as members of the Short-Term Rental Committee. And I move its adoption. Second. Board Member Dyskavani? Yes. Board Member Storms? Yes. <clears throat> Board Member Van Borkham? Yes. Supervisor Stanley? Yes. Resolution 10818, resolution advertising for bids for shared scenic byway sign. Whereas the town of Shandaken is part of the Catsco Mountain Scenic Byway, CMSB, including the towns of Olive, Middletown, and Andes, and the villages of Fleischmann's and Margaretville, and whereas the CMSB continues to work on ways to promote our local towns and villages along the byway for the benefit of our, of our economies, and whereas the Central Catsco Collaborative and Advisory Board and the Route 28 Municipal Leaders Group the Byway Executive Board have made a recommendation for a sign to be erected opposite the road exiting Beller Mountain Ski Center entering the CMSB in the town of Shandaken. And whereas said sign would list CMSB villages and hamlets with mileage counts that would be built from funds provided by each municipality, therefore be it resolved that the town of Shandaken advertise for bids for an all-weather composite sign for the CMSB, any interested party should contact Town Supervisor's Office at 845-688-7165 or via email for spe specifications, all bids clearly marked in large block letters, sign bid, must be received by the town's clerk office, PO Box 67-7209, New York State, Route 28, Shandaken, New York, 12480, no later than 3 p.m. on Monday, September 3rd, 2018, with bids to be opened during the town board meeting that evening at 7 p.m. And move this adoption. On next meeting, I was going to say September 3rd, yeah. Yeah. Change that to the town. I'll second. I'll second. Board member Dizekwani? Yes. Board member Storms? Yes. Board member Van Barkham? Yes. Mr. President. Yes. Resolution number 10918. Support dedication of Ulster County Bridge Street Bridge in Venetia to honor former Ulster County Sheriff Michael Lapagna. Whereas in May of 2017, former Shandaken resident Michael LaPaglia passed away, and whereas Mr. LaPaglia served well for our community and dedicated his life to try and help others. Whereas Mr. LaPaglia was born of Italian immigrant parents in Brooklyn in 1931 and served in the Air Force Reserves and the Office of Special Investigations, OSI. And whereas in 1957, he joined the ranks of the NYPD and assigned to the Homicide Organized Crime Squad. And whereas during vacations, he vacationed and fell in love with the Hudson Valley, eventually building a home in Shandaken. Whereas after moving to Shandaken, Mr. LaPaglia served as Town Constabulary Administrative Chief from 81 to 82, and then Town Councilman from 83 to 86. And whereas he then won several terms as Ulster County Sheriff, serving in that position from January of 1987 until his retirement in December of 1998. Therefore, be it resolved that considering Shandaken resident Mr. Michael Lapagny's distinguished career of public service to our community and the County of Ulster, the Town Board of Shandaken does hereby make this formal request to dedicate the Bridge Street Bridge along County Route 40. Infinity should be dedicated in the name of former Ulster County Sheriff Michael Lapaglia and ask the Ulster County Legislature to take the necessary steps to accomplish this goal and move its adoption. I have a second. Board Member Dusapai? Yes. Board Member Storms? Yes. Board Member Van Barkham? Yes. Supervisor Stanley? Yes. Resolution 110-18, resolution authorizing waiver of 30-day notification required by the New York State Liquor Authority. Whereas Woodstock Local Brewing, LLC, has applied for a liquor license, and whereas Woodstock Local Brewing, LLC, has requested that the town waive the 30-day notification required by New York State Liquor Authority in an event effort to expedite the granting of their liquor license and... Now, therefore, be it resolved that the Town Board of the Town of Shandaken does hereby grant the request of the Woodstock Local Brewing LLC 
and does hereby waive the 30-day liquor license notice requirement to Woodstock Local Brewing, LLC, located at 5581 Route 28, Venetia, New York, 12464, and I move its adoption. Second. And board member Deuce Yes. Board member Yes. Board member Yes. Yes. Thank you. I see Rick's ready to tell. Um, okay, with that, again, I would ask that if you want to address the board, please raise your hand. We ask that you step up to the mic, introduce yourself with your name and what hamlet you live. And um, please keep it respectful, address the board, and we will answer if we can. So, open public comment. Hey. Yes. My name is Hank Williams. I live in uh, Woodland Valley, Phoenicia, New York. Um, I'd like to bring to the attention of the board and the body of this meeting the controversy we seem to be having in Woodland Valley over a that's going to be built on a uh, residential piece of property, zone R5 and zone R3. Uh, this property was bought by a nonprofit. It's not an individual's name. And uh, they are requesting, well, they didn't, they requested through the zoning office or officer, the, uh, they, they were told that they didn't need any permits to build this Buddha. The Buddha is 40 feet high and it'll probably weigh like 260-something thousand pounds. Um, it's it's taller, taller than any structure in Venetia. It's taller, taller than a, a home would be uh, uh, for the height requirements. The height requirement for a home in Venetia and Shandagan is 35 feet. This particular thing is just about 40 feet, and it's going to have a door in the base, similar to the uh, Buddha in Japan. And the one in Japan has a viewing section, I guess, in it. Um, but this particular Buddha is going to be 40 foot high. I don't know how wide it's going to be, um, and the length of the width. And it's going to have some sort of concrete base. Uh, it's going to be up on the top of this property, which is zoned R5. And I believe that based on Shandaken zoning laws, that R5 that's not permitted this particular type of uh, uh, building and, uh, or structure. I believe that it's in a religious nature and also being a profit that is prohibited in R5 and uh, part of that property is R3. So if it was to be built or constructed, constructed in R3, um, it would need a special permit. This particular boot is being built right now in uh, China and it's made of bronze, and it's going to be uh, shipped here and then constructed on, on this parcel of land in Woodland Valley. It's 822 Woodland Valley Road, which is directly or just about directly across from the Thornhill Bridge. So I, in all fairness to Rob, uh, I don't know if any of the board members have heard this, but it seems that a lot of people in Shandagan haven't heard this. They really don't know anything about it. Uh, some people just think it's going to be a traffic issue, um, but in fairness to Ra, I had a meeting with him last week, and it seemed like the zoning officer, the zoning officer Howie, is going to look into the matter of whether they need special permits or whether it's prohibited or whatever. So I don't know. Uh, I know that you've uh, required the uh, builder of this, uh, who claims to own a property, um, Sanjay Raul. You invited him in to discuss that with, I think, yourself and Howie, or just with Howie. Uh, and I don't know where that's actually went up until now. If he's been required to do a site plan study um, or anything else, as you know, the way it was left, that he didn't need a permit. He didn't need. So you know, when I was being asked questions about it, I didn't know the height, the width, the weight. Uh, a any particulars about constructing this thing, or, you know, how it was going to get there and what was going to hold it up on the mountain, what type of uh, foundation or concrete base. But it's confirmed that there's going to be a door in it. So people will be able to get into the structure, whether it be for cleaning, maintenance, or whatever. So I do believe that um, 
that Shan Bacon, uh, the zoning board or the zoning officer, and uh, also the board should um, look into this issue a little more. Uh, thank you, Hank. Yeah, I appreciate it. Coming um, let, me, let me just add this. that um, I gave Hank an analogy. You know, uh, a lot of the stuff, one, it was, it was a conversation that took place between the former building inspector zoning officer last year and the gentleman. He never presented anything physical to us. My analogy to Hank was, you know, I'm, a, I'm speculating about doing some type of business in, in Pine Hill and normal course of procedure. Anybody that's interested in the project goes to the building department and say, How, what do I need to do to accomplish this? Now, it's our understanding how he spoke with Warren, and I guess Warren had said, you know, I, there's no law in the statutes, and I guess what was described to him is different from what we're being described now. But we have not gotten anything physical from the gentleman at, as of yet, I don't believe. But if I'm proposing a business and I, or whatever, and I come and get an idea of what's going on, it's just a proposal until stuff actually starts happening. Now he's put a road on the property, that's an allowable thing, he can have the road on his property. Uh, how he made the call, spoke to this gentleman, uh, Sanjay, Davis, and he did come in, forthcoming, and he's met with, met with Howie last week, I think he's due to come back this week, but he's willing to submit whatever paperwork's necessary. As I said to uh, Hank, that when he says that it's now a thing you can go into, I think, well, that, that right there changes it Completely, because even more would say, well, now it's a structure. Now it's definitively in the code. So we will address it. And, and I think Howie's got a good handle on him. Let him speak in a minute, and he can tell you where it's going. But um, again, a lot of it's until we get something in front of us in hand to say, this is what I'm looking to build, then there's really nothing for us to go on. And quite honestly, if you heard at the beginning of the meeting from Howie's report, He's running around and doing inspections and fire inspections and all these other things. And these are things that are going on now that he has to. He can't spin his wheels on, on somebody's speculation. Now, we knew he was probably going to follow through and get a statue. But Warren says he told the gentleman that when he gets ready to go forward, that he was supposed to come in for at least a site plan review with the planning board to ensure that he had easement setbacks and so on and so forth. So at that point, it would have gone to a further discussion if it had changed from what he had whatever it was that he described to Warren at the time. So I just want to alleviate fears that, you know, we're not rushing anything under the rug. And the people that read that Rob Stanley said there's no statute on statutes, I just repeated a quote from Warren Tut at last year's planning board meeting, and Hank can attest to that. Um, but I'll let, I'll let Howie speak, and, and maybe that'll save some other people from, I'll, I'll let you speak in a minute, let me just let Howie update everybody so that way we don't have to do double takes. Right, okay. Uh, I spoke to um, Sanjay, just after the um, Woodland Valley Community Association had their meeting. I think it was a very contentious meeting. Uh, I called him and um, I asked him for copies of plans, which he said he would send to me. And I asked him to send me them on uh, email and also have the architect. The architect's name is Jeff, Jess Walker from Woodstock. Um, <clears throat> Less, so, Les, Les Walker. No, Les Walker's his father. Yes. Oh, so it's his son. Yes. Oh, okay. Um, so uh, he did call me back. Oh, I, oh, actually, I said to him, I would call him when I got the plans. And I said, Were well, you told that you didn't need a permit? He said, Yes, I was told that I didn't need a permit. Um, so I waited a week. I didn't see the plans. I called him again. He apologized for not sending. He made an appointment with me for last Friday to bring in the plans. The architect was supposed to come in. I called Warren before the meeting to clarify what he had, what everyone had said that he had said. Uh, he told me that he told Sanjay and the architect that they would have to go for a site plan review. He never told them they didn't need a permit. So. I told Sanjay on my second call that <clears throat> I believe you should go for a special use permit for three reasons. One, it could be a place of worship, which is not allowed in R5. Secondly, it's a, it's a uh, cultural, uh, like a museum, gallery, it's not allowed in R5. 
he refers to the statute as barred. And the third reason was for a nonprofit organization, club, cannot build in the R5 zone. So those three reasons. And um, he came in on Friday, and we chatted for half an hour. The architect never showed up. Apparently, there was a miscommunication. Um, he told me that he would have the architect get me the plans this week. So I, I'm hoping that by the end of this week, I have something that I can start to answer questions about how big is it, you know, where is it going to be located, what about parking, how many people. And um, <clears throat> so until I get that, I really, all I know is what hearsay is around town. But um, he did make a commitment that he would do whatever the town required him to do. Uh, I have a picture of something being built in China right now. That's kind of what I was going to say, Hank, if I can interrupt. So, just to be clear, it's not a Buddha, it's not a yeah. statue of Buddha, it's a statue of. Uh, of but, yeah, I know. I know. Sri Tinoy. And for those of you who may think that this community will come and spend money in our community, etc., it's a very insular group. It's actually similar to like a Hasidic group, they're very insular. Um, I happen to live in Jamaica Hills, which is the headquarters of this group, and they happen to then come onto Woodland Valley Road where I live. So I know a lot about how they work. They're nice people. I'm not saying anything, you know, slanderous about who they are. There is some, there has been, as you've seen from Facebook, uh, a lot of negative, um, there have been accusations of this man that he has um, had sexual, He's had sexual abuse of, of quite a few fo uh, followers. There's a book about it. There's plenty of So that's part of my objection is this space up there. I know I don't know. I'm just putting.